when we think about sleep, it's both the time, but it's also the quality of sleep. For patients with sleep apnea, they tend to have this fragmented or broken up sleeve where they might be tossing and turning. Even if a patient is spending a full night in bed, they're not getting a full night of sleep. I noticed that I wasn't sleeping as good as I used to. I was always waking up in the middle of the night several times a night and sometimes gasping for air. Obstructive sleep apnea is a once in a while blocking of your airway when you are sleeping at night. This can be associated with snoring. It can be associated with feeling really tired or groggy during the day. There are some really serious consequences of having untreated sleep apnea. Heart attack, stroke, high blood pressure. I went to the doctor and they did a sleep study. He has said, I have severe obstructive sleep apnea. The doctor recommended me get a CPAP and I think I slept worse with the CPAP than I did without it. So sleep surgery, we view it typically as a second line treatment options for patients who have tried and failed some of the first line options like CPAP therapy or oral appliance or various other strategies. Many patients are familiar with the hypoglossal nerve stimulators such as Inspire. And for many patients, that is a really great option. But when we're thinking about surgeries, we're really thinking about multiple different procedures. It's a process where we're working with our patients to decide what might be the best option for them. I came to do I met with uh, the doctor and she says, has anybody told you that you have really enlarged tonsils? I was like, yes, several times, many times. We thought that really targeting the tonsils and the area behind the palate would be the most effective strategy for him. It was painful for like the first two weeks. That third week, it really healed it up and it was great. I feel like I sleep much better than I did before. She did another sleep study post-op. She read the sleep study and she seemed that I no longer have any obstructive sleep apnea, that my sleep apnea is gone now, um, which is great. I'm happy about that. So, <laughs> Perfection actually isn't necessarily the goal. And depending on the patient, depending on the severity of sleep apnea, that might not be possible for a patient to say, yeah, you know what? I can sleep in the same bedroom as my partner. You know what? I can drive and I can get through my day and I'm not dragging. And the fact that we can have such an impact on their day-to-day -day lives, as well as their overall health, makes it truly rewarding.